Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I would like to share with you the Baal cycle. Now before I will start, I want to share with you some introduction regarding the Baal cycle and I'm going to share this with you from the book The Ugaritic Narrative Poetry by Simon B. Parker. So I highly suggest for you to purchase that book, it will help you in your studies, it will help you to understand the Baal cycle completely. So, the Ugaritic narrative poems all came from the ancient city of Ugarit, which lies half a mile inland from the Syrian coast opposite the eastern tip of Cyprus. The city was discovered after a farmer's accidental exposure of an ancient tomb nearby in 1928 and has been excavated almost annually since 1929. The excavators have uncovered a large palace, an acropolis with two temples, the house of the high priest and the house of a divination priest, and numerous other large and small buildings, both sacred and secular. These all date from the 14th and 13th centuries BCE. Ugarit was well situated for trade. Trade routes extended by land eastward to the other major cities of Syria, to Maitani and to Assyria, by sea westward to Cyprus and the Aegean, by land and by sea northward and westward to Asia Minor and to the territory of the Hittites, and southward to Palestine and Egypt. Through economic and cultural context with these various regions, Ugarit became a rich and cosmopolitan city in the Late Bronze Age. Excavators have found in the city the scripts and languages of several of the cultures with which it had relations. Two languages and scripts predominate. However, Akkadian, the language of the Assyrians and Babylonians, was the international language of the period and was used especially for communications between states, including Egypt. Ugarit was predominantly under Egyptian influence in the first part of the Late Bronze Age, but after 1350 BCE was dominated by the Hittite state to the north. The first three narratives translated here, Kirta, Akkad, and Baal, stories of a king, a patriarch, and the gods, respectively, are recognizably literally works, whether the social purposes they served. Several of the other shorter narratives, however, appear to have some more immediate practical use, as is suggested by references to ritual acts, prescriptions, or social circumstances in conjunction with which the narratives were recited. This suggests the immediate power of specific narratives in relation to specific situations. The text presents Baal's struggles to establish his kingship over the universe. The first two tablets, 7-8, describe the conflict between Baal, the storm god, whose name means Lord, and his enemy Yam, whose name means Sea. The next two tablets, 9 and 10, detail the process leading to Baal's acquisition of a palace, the crowning mark of his kingship. The last two tablets, 11 and 12, relate Baal's confrontations with Mot, which is God of the Dead. The god Athtar, or Ashtar, the meaning of whose name is disputed, is mentioned twice as a possible rival to Baal. These four warrior gods rule different realms of the universe. Baal is the god of the storm and lord of the sky, Yam the god of the sea, Mot is the god of the death, and the god of the underworld, and Athtar, an astral god who is perhaps a natural irrigator. Other deities appear in the Baal cycle. El's name means god, perhaps in the sense of the god, or more literally, the strong one. As the older king and patriarch of the Pantheon, El rules in conjunction with his wife and mother of the Pantheon, Athirat, whose name is Asherah. Together, El and Athirat oversee the divine family. This older couple are the parents of the Pantheon, and they mediate their rival son's claims to the divine throne. 
The other characters in the Baal cycle manifest various aspects of nature and society. Kotar Wachsis literally mean crafty and wise. Is a specialist who serves other deities with his craftsmanship, which includes spells. Shapash, the sun goddess, is the divine messenger who communicates El will and travels between the realms of life and death. Astart, or Greek Astarte, and Anat are Baal's warrior allies. The names of two of Baal's three women and brides are Tali, which means dewy, Pidrai, which means fleshy, evidence their meteorological kingship with Baal. While the name of the third one, Arsai, is earthly or netherworldly, may reflect a ketonic nature comparable to his. In the Baal cycle, there is also a mention of the unnamed messengers of Yam, as well as Baal messengers Gefen and Ugar, which means vine and field. Also a Sheraz messenger, Kudash Amrar, which means holy and strong. They occupy the lowest level of the divine assembly. In this video, I'm not going to focus on the story of Kirta and Akkad. In this video, I'm only going to focus on the Baal cycle. I will do a separate video on the stories of Kirta and Akkad. Our story begins with El and Yam planning to attack Baal. Yam is describing to El how he is going to attack Baal with the help of El. Yam is also concerned of being attacked by Baal and he is afraid of him. And the god El, his father, is instructing Yam how to attack Baal. Then the story continues to a special feast that El is inviting all of the gods. The gods are gathered together in the assembly place. And El appoints his son and proclaims his name as Yam. El is asking from Yam to drive Baal from his throne, as El and Baal have rivalry between them. El is telling Yam that if he fails to drive Baal from his throne, Baal will beat and defeat him. Then the gods having a feast. El is sending messengers to the god Kotar Vachsis, which is the god of craftsmanship, and they ask that Kotar Vachsis arrive to El's abode. Kotar Vachsis arriving, and El is asking from Kotar to build a palace for Yam. Then there is a conversation between the sun goddess Shapshu and the god Atar. Shapshu is telling Atar that he have no chance to rule, and Atar is telling that he have no palace like the other gods, and like a lion he will descend with his desire. Then Baal sends messengers to Yam, and they say, You, Yam! rose against mightiest Baal. On your head will be Aymari. Aymari is the divine weapon that Baal defeated Yam with. Then Baal continued to curse Yam. May Horon break, O Yam. May Horon break your head. Astarte, the name of Baal, your crown. Then Yam instructs his messengers to go to the assembly of the gods and to not bow down before El and to not bow down before the other gods. He tells them to stand straight and recite the instructions. The messengers arrive to Mount Lel, where the assembled council is meeting. Meanwhile, the gods sit down to feast. Then the gods see young messengers approaching, and the gods lower their heads. Baal is so annoyed with them and rebukes the gods. Why do you lower, O gods, your heads? Baal tell the gods to raise their heads up. Baal is also saying, and I myself will answer Yam's messenger. And the gods raise their heads. The messengers of Yam arrive. They do not bow down at El's feet, and they do not bow down before the other gods. Standing, they speak their speech and recite their instructions. They tell Bull El his father, Word of Yam, your lord, your master, Judge River. Give up, O gods, the one you obey, the one you obey, O multitude. Give up Baal, that I may humble him, the son of the gun, that I may possess his gold. And to that El responds to Yam. Your slave is Baal, O Yam, the son of the gun, your captive. 
He will bring tribute to you, like the gods will bring a gift to you. Then Baal is getting very angry, and he seizes with his hand a striker, in his right hand a slayer, and strikes the messengers of Yam. Anatan Astarte seizes his hands and saying to Baal, Why did you strike the messengers? Then Baal is saying, I myself say to Yam, your lord, your master, hear the word of the annihilator, Hadu. You bow down. Then in the first conflict between Yam and Baal, Baal is losing and Astarte proclaiming his demise. Patarvachsi speaks to Baal and convinces him to destroy Yam and take his eternal kingship for good. Kotar Vaxis prepares two weapons for battle against Yam. Kotar makes two weapons, Yagrish and Aymari. They mean driver and chaser. In the battle, Baal strikes the torso of Yam between the arms of the Jad River. But Yam is strong and he does not sink. Then Baal strikes with the weapon Aymari and he strikes the head of Prince Yam between the eyes of Jad River. Yam collapses and falls to the ground. Baal drags and dismembers Yam. He destroys Judge River. After the battle, two deities proclaim Baal kinship. Then there is a description of Baal victory feast. Then Anat is preparing for a battle and going for a fight with the enemies of Baal. Then she cleanses herself with the reign of Baal and sings for him. Baal sends messengers to Anat and asks from her to come to his place and stop with war. When the messengers arrive to Anat, she's getting anxious and thinking that there is another rival that stands against Baal. But the messengers calm her down and say that there is no rival to Baal and that Baal asks from her to bring peace and to arrive to his place, so he will reveal some mysteries to her. When Anat arrives to his place in the summit of Tzafon, Baal removes his women from her presence. He gives her food, then Baal is complaining to Anat that he have no house like the other gods, he have no palace. Anat tells Baal that she will ask El, his father, to give him permission to build his palace. And if he refuse, she will drag him like a lamb to the ground and make his gray hair run with blood. Anat journeys to El to ask him to give permission to build a palace to Baal. El is hiding from Anat in seven rooms, and Anat threatens El. Apparently, this method is not working for her, and meanwhile, Baal instructs his messengers to go to Kotar Varsis and ask from Kotar to build beautiful furniture to bribe his mother Asherah. Then Baal and Anat decide to visit Asherah in her home, and bring her the gifts. Asherah is doing her domestic chores. She lifts her eyes and sees Baal and Anat approaching. She's afraid of them and asks them why did they came. Asherah is asking them, would you murder me or my sons? Then she sees a gleam of silver and a glint of gold. Asherah rejoices and she understands that Baal and Anat came with gifts. She admires the beautiful gifts and makes a feast for Baal and Anat. Then there is a text where events in the Divine Council are being recounted. Baal says that Yam humiliated him amid the assembly of the gods, and that Baal hates three types of feasts, a feast of shame, a feast of degradation, and a feast of the lewdness of maidens, for their shame is sin. Then Baal and Anat trying to convince Asherah to intercede on Baal's behalf and to ask permission from El to build Baal Palace. Asherah is a green and journeys to El a body. El is happy to see Asherah, and Asherah honors El and says that Baal is their ruler, and he has no palace like the other gods. Let him build a palace, so may Baal enrich with his reign. El gives his permission, and Anat delivers the good news to Baal. Baal rejoices and preparations for the building of his palace begin. Then Kotar Varsis and Baal debate over installing a window in the palace. Kotar is saying that a window should be installed, and Baal refuses and not wanting to install a window, as he is afraid that Yam will steal his brides. 
Then the palace is built and Baal prepares a divine banquet for the gods. Baal makes arrangements for his home. He slaughters large stock as well as small. He invites his brothers and the 70 sons of Asherah. Then Baal goes for a victory tour in cities and towns. Afterwards, there is a text that Baal reversed his decision and permitting window installation in his palace. The window is installed and Baal gives his voice with thunder and the earth shakes. The enemies of Baal hide in the woods and mountainsides and Baal enthroned in his house. Then Baal decides to send messengers to Mot. As Mot, god of the dead, was not present at his divine banquet and refuses to accept Baal as king. Baal instructs his messengers how to approach the land of Mot, the house of freedom. Mot is not thrilled with the message of Baal and invites Baal to be his guest and his main course. Mot threatens Baal that he will pierce him, and then his message continues as he mocks Baal's victory over the sea serpent. Mot threatens Baal that he will eat him and Baal will descend to Mot's throat. Then Baal announces his surrender. Baal is afraid of Mot and says to Mot that, Your servant I am and yours forever. Divine Mot rejoices and then Baal is commanded to descend to the underworld. Afterwards, Baal's death is announced and mourned. The gods are mourning the death of Baal. Then there are proposals for successors to Baal, but none of them are strong as Baal and they cannot rule. Anat is searching for Baal and longing for him. She is tired of this situation, so she seizes Mot and splits him, burns and grinds him, and throws his parts in the field. Then El is having a dream that Baal is returning, and Baal returns to his throne and enthroned. Then in the seventh year, Mot complains to Baal that due to Baal, he faced shame, splitting with the sword, and burning with fire. Mot is asking that Baal give up one of his brothers for Mot's consumption, so Mot's anger will turn away. Baal apparently is giving to Mot to eat his own brothers, so Mot is getting angry and they go for a battle. They both strong and continue fighting until El intervenes on Baal's behalf via Shapshu, the sun goddess. Shapshu threatens Mot that El will remove his throne if he will not stop fighting with Baal, and Mot is afraid of that. Mot trembles at her voice and says, let Baal be enthroned on his royal throne.